Welcome back. It's coming up on the end of June in Alaska, which means the sun never sets. Sleep eludes us, and time seemingly stands still on these long, beautiful Alaskan summer days. We are Jim, Ember, and Cynthia. And when we left you last, we were exploring the beautiful state of Alaska in our Winnebago Revel 4x4 Sprinter van, taking you along with us to find the most remote off-grid boondocking locations we can find in Alaska and explore her vast wilderness. But today, we do something a little out of the ordinary. While we spend time with friends, celebrate Jim's birthday, and begin an epic fishing season in Alaska. Thank you for being here with us on another Alaskan adventure. We're getting ready to go pick up two of our friends and this is gonna be the first time that we have ever taken anybody with us in the van camping before. I think we're ready for this. First clue was a sign right back there that said one lane road. <laughs> <laughs> Every summer since Jim and I have been married, we have spent his birthday fishing while inviting family and friends. This summer, we hit up Jim's favorite fishing hole along the Clutina River and made reservations at our favorite riverside campground, put down the cameras, and enjoyed the evening with our friends. And I would say we stayed up until the sun came up, but on this day, the sun never went down. The next morning, we were slow to rise, but Creighton whipped up an amazing biscuit and gravy meal that gave us the energy that we would need for the hike to the mouth of the Clutina River.
We knew the water was running high, but we didn't know exactly how high until we could see it for ourselves. So, it was off into the woods we went, having far too much fun along the way. Our favorite campground when we're out here fishing on the river. So this is my birthday weekend. We're about to have a good time fishing. Wish us luck. That was fun. We're at the end of the hike. The water is really high, flowing fast, and it is super hot. This is like suntan weather in Hawaii. <laughs> Ugh. My shirt is soaked from sweat. <laughs> it was a nice hike though, but we just can't cross the river to get where we need to go to get the fishies on the other side, so we might give it a shot here. We might have some luck. Well, we might start working our way back upstream and fish along the banks of the river. There's a lot of cool spots. We just prefer coming down here by the mouth, especially this time of year. But there's no way we can get there right now. And so this is due to the 70 to 80 degree weather we've been having for the last couple of weeks. And it caused a massive melt of the snow cap. And that is what's flowing through these rivers right now, flooding everything, and just makes it a bigger challenge. It's fun, it's a beautiful hike. Where we're at is incredible, but it's just not where we wanna be. So we'll find somewhere else that we wanna be. That's the way we do it. What do they have in their little store? Wanna go check it out? When we returned to camp, fishless and feeling somewhat defeated, the weather changed and we experienced a much needed downpour. You see, the weather in Alaska has been hot and dry this summer and it's only a matter of time before wildfire season begins. So it's on days like this that we are grateful for the downpour. Good food and great friendship.
The next day, we slept in, but we woke up hungry. So before we got our lines wet in a different part of the river, we stopped into the cute little town of Copper Center, where if you visit this area of Alaska, we highly recommend the food at Nummy's Cafe. The portions are huge and the food is delicious. So be sure to arrive hungry. After that amazing breakfast, we moved further down the river to try our luck. Well, the boys did. Bonnie and I just laid in the hammock and laughed until our stomachs hurt. And while Bonnie and Creighton had to leave, Jim and I decided to stick around and wait for the fish to arrive. And as soon as the fish arrived, the campground crowds did as well. And it was here that we were not so gently reminded of how exactly why we never stay in campgrounds. It's possible this kid lessened the pain of being in a campground. But the Clutina Fire Week Festival was going on in town and the Copper River Reds were about to come in. So we decided to check out the area and enjoy the festival. Breakfast of champions. Does that make you a champion? All day, every day. Breakfast is served. Let's eat.
like one of the first songs Sarah and I played together. Welcome back everyone. For the last week we've been hanging out here by the Clutina River waiting for the fish to show up. Our friends came, they left, and we're still waiting for the fish to show up. The water is really high this year and every year we come here to celebrate Jim's birthday, Father's Day in mid-June, and we are fishing for Copper River Red Salmon, which in our opinion is the best salmon you can find. We haven't had any luck yet. But this weekend they have what's called the Fireweed Festival going on and we're excited to walk around here, get a little feel for that festival and see what there is to see. We also found a few more camping spots that we didn't know existed so we're walking around and checking that out right now. Thanks for hanging out with us today. And if you've been following us for a while you guys know that we don't really hang out in campgrounds very often but here in the Copper River Basin, there aren't a whole lot of places to boondock because most of it is privately owned and this is such a hot fishing spot that it's hard to find boondocking places. So we just went ahead and got the campground that we get every year. And as we're wandering around, we found this really cool spot that we didn't know existed because right now we are surrounded by kids and dogs and all the campground stuff. But look at this. It's really nice. It's right by the river and it's private. I think this is at the top of our list for the place to stay next time. Yes, definitely. We love Clutina River Charters and we love the campground, but wow, this is really cool. They have this whole street blocked off and quite a few vendors. And it looks like the band is warming up to play later which looks like something that we'd be interested in coming back to. I think the plan for today is to put Ember up, go fishing. Oh, good job. You made it in the, made it in the river bank. Now? Thank you, dear. There you go. That's $10. You're out. Okay, I'm waiting too long. Well, hello. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I see. Remember, they had a lot of mac and cheese. Yeah. That's a... That's a... After ordering our beer, we found this cool little train place. And this represents the Kennecott Mine. It's like a replica of it. Which is outside of McCarthy. And McCarthy's over there.
some meat. Past couple of days we've been chatting with our friend back here and he has been coming here for 25 years every year he stays in the same spot and he knows this river well according to him the fish are supposed to be in either today or tomorrow morning he's predicting five o'clock in the morning we're headed out it's about three o'clock in the afternoon not quite sure when we're gonna be back it will depend on the fish. Let's go slay some fish. And see if he's right. We're gonna come over and talk to these guys later because we like their setup. Pretty intrigued by that rooftop pit. We have questions, but they've been busy fishing. I said fishing but not catching. That's our goal is to catch. Fishing's fun, but it's not fun when you're not getting anything. It's exhausting. And it was time for another hike without Ember because tossing things into a river that she can't catch is pure torture. So, will today be our lucky day? I started the fire to keep the mosquitoes away and hopefully cook up a fresh fish from the river. This is gonna be our camp for a few hours. I just got this fire started with practically nothing and everything is really wet, so we'll see if we can keep it going, but Jim's gonna keep fishing. Everybody has left. It's about six o'clock. We're just hanging out, enjoying this. and Jim got a feel for the river. I love fishing, but I also have a very short attention span. Jim can pound the water for hours on end, contemplating whatever it is he contemplates. I cannot. I need to explore. To Jim, fishing is meditation. I don't mind fishing as long as I know the fish are there so I tend to wander off. While Jim gets his line wet, I'm taking a walk. 
I'd like to show you where we usually like to cross the river to get to the mouth. But as we've been saying, the river is high and crossing isn't gonna happen. But I thought I'd walk up here and just see what it looks like. We usually cross right here. Or there are people over there. Daddy's bringing us home dinner. Number two. The time is going by really fast. It doesn't feel like it's six o'clock and Jim has two fish in. Our limit is three each. So once he gets his three, I will get my line in the water too. For now, I'm just chilling. He's better at this than I am. I'm just keeping the fire going so the mosquitoes stay away. But as soon as Jim caught two Copper River Reds, I tossed my line in the water and caught one on the very first cast. There was no camera rolling and that's okay. We had been there for hours and tomorrow is another day of fishing. Well, three. That was a good day's fishing. I'm hungry and sore. <laughs> Let's go back to camp and eat and then maybe we'll come back in the morning. Sounds like a plan. Good fishing though. Get. I, I'd hang out down there, but I don't know. You got the fish. Yep. Yeah.
we left the campground and found this great spot that we normally stay at, but we didn't this time around. And uh, we'll talk about that as we're fishing, but round two of fishing and we each are able to get three today. So hopefully we'll be able to hit our limit within a couple of hours. And then we're headed down to Seward to hit up a charter. So get some halibut. Get ready to go get some halibut. So this is usually where we stay. Let's start our hike. Let's do it. I don't think we've ever actually looked to see how long this hike is, but it's, it's a good one. There are bears and moose. Definitely signs of moose all over. And here we have wild roses. Bluebells. Whenever we do this hike, Jim likes to do it in record speed or something. But it's kind of cool to stop and look at all this. Because all this came up within the past couple of days. I better hurry. Keep up with him. He's got all the good stuff. The bear spray and the gun. Pretty sure every time we do this, we get faster and faster at doing it. You guys should have seen me the first time I did this. I sucked. <laughs> As we were expecting, the mosquitoes are terrible this week. So bad. That's one of the reasons why we're actually moving so fast. Maybe they can't keep up with us. And every time we do this, the water's a little bit different. This is the water so high. We have a couple places that we have to cross and possibly get wet. This is the spot we had such good luck at yesterday and we have it all to ourselves. I gathered some sticks and got the fire going. And I was just joking with Jim that I've got the fire going now. He needs to bring us our lunch straight out of the river. Your hook is like right on your weight. Somebody next to us caught something. Well, I almost said we failed. That wasn't a failure. We didn't catch any fish, but we met some really cool people. So, what have we learned today? Time stops for no one. And when one looks on the horizon above any body of water for long enough, they often find themselves in the distance. The challenge is taking the time to look far and long enough. 
next week, we take to the sea and land a monster. So until then, be sure to like and subscribe, and don't leave without saying hello to us below in our comments. Stay happy, healthy, and safe. We will see you again soon.